And I'll tell you, I like something that my dad was fond of saying when he was, I guess it came out of a, a time when he was witnessing to somebody and the statement was made, you know, you can trust somebody who died for you. You want to know what love is? That's what it is. That's what the scripture says. Here is the one who was the great I am from the foundation of the world. I mean, how can you put this in words? <laughs> that he who would suffer such, re such resistance, such rejection by men would nonetheless be willing to go to the cross to bear the very sins of the ones who were crucifying him and to pray, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And you want to do it your way instead of his way? Whew. I don't want to be in that place. God has an answer to every issue of life. It's not about health, being healthy and wealthy and wise in this world and all those kinds of things that a lot of religion seeks. But, oh, God has a plan. God has a purpose, and he has a people. And you're connected to him. You're going to be part of that. He's going to see to it. That's his job. I'm, I'm so glad to leave the driving to him. He knows the way. He is the way. But he's the life. You know, I, apart from him, what life do I have but the one I got from Adam? That's no good. That's been messed up. That's been screwed up royally. It's so corrupted by sin that there's nothing I can do to make it produce righteousness. I need him. But you know, life is not something where he's over there and I'm over here and he sends me a package and I open it up. Oh, good, life. I got it. Life is not a thing. Life is a living relationship. I mean, you see it in the, the illustrations that he uses where he says, I am the vine. And you are the branches. God has brought life into this world. How did he do it? He brought it in Jesus. But think of, the, think of the imagery there. He planted a source of life in this earth. And that life is Jesus. He said, I'm the vine. My father is the husband. And he takes care of it all. He's the one that just tends everything, keeps the weeds out, makes sure it's good and healthy. I'm a vine. I got life in me. And he says to his disciples, you are the branches. Well, what's the relationship of vine to branches? Do they, are they separate? Do, you, do they sort of look over and, say, and imitate the vine and say, oh, if I could just be like the vine? A lot of people's Christianity is like that. They got the what would Jesus do religion. Well, you know, that's, that's admirable in a way, I guess, to want to follow someone who's a good example, but that's not salvation. You do that, all you got is an imitation. Because we are not him. We do not have the, the ability to produce the fruit that that vine has in it. Because the life that's in us is not the life that's in that vine. But oh, if we allow him to graft us into that vine, and there's a living relationship, then every bit of nutrition, every bit of life power that's in that vine flows into the branches. And we don't do it by gritting our teeth and trying to imitate Jesus. We just let him live. We yield. We believe. We trust. We, we cooperate with him. We, we forsake our own way. We let it go and we say, Lord, I want your way. Teach me. Let the, let the, let the uh, path by which this, this life flows into me, let it be open. Let there be no hindrance in my heart and my will that just wants to buck against what you want. Let me be open to you. Let that life flow. How does the vine produce fruit? Does it strive and work? That's the process that we just described. It just yields and fruit happens. Amen. You know, he talks about the branches that don't bear fruit. And what's, what's that about? Does that mean someone's saved and they're lost? No, this is somebody who never has a real vital inner relationship with Christ. It's a pretty good picture, isn't it, of a lot of religion. You've got people that are outwardly connected to Christ in some way. They come to church. They have their name on the roll. They, they, do the, they participate in the activities. They, they uh, profess faith in the creeds. So the outside looks like they're attached to Christ, but there's no living connection on the inside. And so there's no fruit that's produced. There's nothing to that, is there? We need that living relationship. 
And you know, that's where we started in Colossians there, where Christ who is your life. Oh, my, I, I just sense in the heart of God just a longing to be the life of everyone here in the life of the church. My God, if we convert them to our church, that's the worst, last thing we need to do. Yeah. We need to be so full of his life that people will just say, I want what you have. I want the one you know. I want to know the one you know. I want someone who can, do, who can give me the sense of peace, the sense that I, I'm loved by a holy God, the sense that I'm forgiven. Oh, God, it's like we said several weeks ago, we, you know, you've got people in the world that are so tormented by guilt that they're willing to go out and commit murder to try to earn heaven. Oh, my God, think what Jesus has done for us. He didn't do it because we did anything. He did it in spite of everything we are and everything we've done. Oh, what, a, you know, what other answer is there but to just bow before him and worship him? He is the center of everything. You know, I don't, I don't know how else to express this, and maybe someone else can, can add to it, but I would sure say if you don't know him, that's the key to everything. Jesus said this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus, whom you have sent. He didn't say it's to believe a certain doctrine, join a certain church, do this, do that, follow a certain preacher. Just know him, know his son. You know, we sang a song. I was just amazed at some of the songs we sang this morning in turn, you know, in, because of the things, the thoughts that I've been having. But what did Paul say? He describes in Philippians chapter 3 his own background. I'll just refer to it, but you're welcome to follow along if you want. But Paul describes his pedigree. He had so many religious advantages that he was a superstar in the Jews' religion. He had it all. You talk about somebody who was diligent in the study of scriptures, this was Paul. And yet he didn't have a clue, did he, 